community uh, session today on Salesforce DS projects. So uh, we have Vishal with us, who is leading the Gurgaon Salesforce Developer Group community. He is also 6x Salesforce certified. And myself and Himanshu, we are coordinating this event. I am Megha Sau, Technical Consultant at Salesforce. I am 13x Salesforce certified. Trail head triple star ranger and also a multi cloud specialist, saying that I have worked on multiple clouds like sales, service, experience, manufacturing, automotive. So that's all about me. Then we have Himanshu. Himanshu, over to you. Would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Thank you, Mega. Hi, guys. My name is Himanshu. I'm tech lead at Accenture. I'm 510 Salesforce certified. Uh, I came from a full stack and multi-cloud background. I worked on multiple clouds and with that, like uh, also worked with multiple stacks too. Uh, talking about me, I love getting tattoos, uh, love rescuing dogs and spend time with them. And I'm so much into books. And if you want to connect with me, this is my handle and uh, we can talk more over there. Yeah, mega to you. Thank you, Manshu. So uh, today's speaker is Gaurav, who is a lead IT engineer at Selna. And he is going to talk about the DX project. And after his session, we have a Kahoot. So we also have few upcoming events planned. Uh, you can register for that. So first uh, session after that, we have on 13th of April. It's all it's about AI and data. Then we have uh, that one is a virtual event. Then we have another event on 21st April. Uh, this is that event is a continuation of this event only. Then we have another event on 18th May, which is the in person event about the deep dive into Einstein for developers and Einstein Cooper. So you can go ahead to and RSVP for that. And you can also follow us on the social media. There are the few links. Uh, Vishal gonna post the uh, links here in the chat, so you can easily follow us. So thank you everyone for joining. I'll hand it over to Gaurav. Stage is all yours. Okay. Thank you, Meva. Thank you for starting a nice introduction. Let me share my screen. And let me know once you guys see my screen. Yes, it's coming. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining today's session. And as Mega stated, today's session is about introduction and co setup of Salesforce DX projects. How you can leverage DS code and Salesforce DX into your day to day work, and it will increase your productivity. So, Salesforce DX is a Salesforce developer experience uh, where Salesforce is working towards uh, making a good experience for the developer so that they can enhance their productivity. Uh, uh, how and why we can see later in the session. Very first thing, introduction to myself. Uh, Megha give a very nice introduction, uh, but I want to introduce myself again. My name is Gaurav Yadav. I'm a Salesforce lead architect in Siena. Siena is a telecommunication equipment manufacturer organization. We deal with the networking equipments. And I'm also a chapter leader for Slack community, Daradu. And I'm a Slack enthusiast. And uh, that's why I'm on the leadership board into the Slack all over the globe on, globe on the third position. And I'm also a Salesforce Ranger and 5X certified. And I usually share my knowledge uh, on my YouTube channel as well. Uh, its handle is at the rate discover Salesforce with GY. And my Twitter handle is at the rate G by g the four so if you want you can connect with me in any of the means and if you want to know something uh, about or in details you can follow my youtube channel uh, though it is having very few less content uh, recently new but it is having more productive things 
session rule uh, we will do uh, uh, if you have attended my previous sessions as well i believe in a lot of brainstorming it should not be like a one way communication that i am speaking uh, i i believe in discussions and a lo lot of brainstorming so today uh, moderators will help me out please let me know uh, mega himanshu whenever uh, there is some questions uh, since i am working on uh, today so i will not be able to track the chats please let me know if uh, any questions are on the chat stop at that moment and with that one sure sure okay thank you uh, having said that uh, today's target audience is salesforce developers and salesforce administrators but not limited to them uh, if you are into the salesforce functional if you are a salesforce qa um, it is a more uh, beneficial session for you as well and trust me uh, you will gain uh, some more uh, insights from today's session and uh, maybe uh, these concept will uh, be beneficial for you immediately or maybe 6 months or maybe after a year and you can thank me later on uh, on the twitter as well so before we starting the session i just wanted to know how many of you use vs code into your day to day development uh, you can reply on the chats i'm going on the chat to see if someone is replying rahul you going to say something yes everyone 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 okay because of the lwc okay uh, someone recently started okay nice uh, so i think we have have a mix of the audience and how many of you heard the term of salesforce ds salesforce developer experience again i'm going to chat just to see if someone is replying yes no yep yeah okay okay good good okay still uh maybe you can train any of your uh, colleagues as well if they have not heard of uh, and that's a takeaway from this session and as uh mega said this is a two session series in the first session uh we are doing a basic introduction uh like before vs code if you have heard the term of the developer console if you not well and good uh if you if you have heard the term of developer console and we can we can discuss about some some of the developer developer consoles struggle why vs code for the salesforce development introduction to the salesforce dx and setting up of the environment so this is the context setting for the next session in the next session we will do a more deep dive and doing a more advanced concept like even without opening your salesforce org uh, into the browser do all the development you have seen java developers python developers they are doing all the development directly from their ide integrated development environment and they never go to the browser or anything we will see that kind of workflow in the next session so for setting up the context i want uh, today's assignment or the today's homework for everyone that go ahead install vs code in a personal machine in your office laptops wherever you feel comfortable and still if you have installed it just update it uh, I, i'll show you the uh, updated as well because uh, from last month onwards uh, salesforce introduced a lot of new concept now they have moved from the sfdx to the sf commands and there are a lot of new exciting features coming over there uh, before proceeding uh, developer console anyone heard of the term developer console or is still using developer console yes rahul is using varika is using developer console i still use okay sometimes some sometimes is I, that's what i'm expecting yes so if your answer is yes still if you are using developer console then you are not fully utilizing the power of salesforce dx and vs code that's what i want to say so that's a little bit feedback for you uh, so myself i opened the developer console i think last year last year or last to last year something to just to check that is not coming up in the vs code and i never rarely rarely huge so as um, you talk to the more code heads or the more developers um, they stopped using the vs code so that's the main agenda moving 
towards you into the VS Code development, completely VS Code development. Never ever uh, say the term developer console. So uh, if uh, I heard that still people are using it, so you may know the uh, limitations of the developer consoles, limitations and the bottlenecks. I will first discuss uh, these two because I want to set the context. Developer console, a very limited text editing feature. Uh, you cannot highlight the text you cannot do a productivity things uh, very limited text editing feature and it becomes a cumbersome uh, for aligning your text or maybe uh, to increase the readability of your code so that's the limitations in the developer console second is the debugging yes debugging is there but not up to that extent what is the variable assignment what is the value if i can add a breakpoints doing during the debugging next is the version controlling uh, integration so maybe you are using the developer console and the vs code majority of the developers using that way uh, i know that they are doing the development into the developer console writing the apex class and they are vs code to fetch that code and putting into the version control so that's the context switching that you are continuously doing you are doing the development into the developer console coming to the vs code just for the sake of putting your code into the git and or maybe just you are using your uh, VS code for the LWC component because LWC is something uh, that is not completely uh, controlled into the or, or cannot be completely developed into the developer console. Uh, I think it is not open at all. Uh, that's what uh, maybe you guys are using or majority of the developers use. And the last limitation is limitations are not limited to them. There are a lot of limitations, but uh, these are the top four limitations that I found uh, um, that I thought of uh, mentioning worth here. Uh, manual project management. What it means, manual project management, once you go to the VS Code setup, everyone in your team, everyone throughout the globe, not within the team, within the other companies or outside world as well, outside to your company, they are using the same project structure. But currently what is happening uh, in the developer console, you may download your code into the local, in any of the repository, there is no proper standard follows. So those are the some of the limitations and that becomes a bottleneck on tracking that. Bottleneck means context switching. I discussed earlier, you are just, Switching the context just for the sake of so that I can put my code into the v, uh, version control system because my company is saying every time you are developing things, uh, put it into the developer console. Or maybe you are developing a lightning web component. You are developing a lightning web component into the VS code, but you are switching the context for the Apex or to find out your Apex or to searching any other, other person's code. So that's the context switching that you are doing again and again. So that becomes a bottleneck. So let's say, uh, Many of you may tell that, okay, it just take one second, just uh, uh, alt tab to switch the context, uh, nothing new, but consider uh, you are just spending one second in context switching and you have to switch 60 times a day, 70 times a day. It will be a one minute. One minute daily you are spending on context switching or maybe more. Uh, just do a compounding and how much time you are investing uh, within an year. So think from the bigger vision point of view. Collaboration challenges, let's say I do have developed the code I'm passing out to Megha, Vishal or Himan. So can, can you review my code? Can you, can you give my comment? So collaboration is very challenging in the developer console. So uh, uh, it could be possible that uh, I write the code, Himan will not able to see it completely. And yes, they will able to see, but they are making the changes directly over there. It will override my code. So that's the collaboration challenges. We are not talking to each other unintentionally. We are modifying each other code. So that's the one of the challenge and limited customization. You cannot uh, have the some of the productivity shortcuts, keyboard, uh, keyboard shortcuts. If you have seen some of the developers from the other programming world or other software engineering world, they are very fast in doing things. They are very fast in debugging. How? Because they have created a keyboard shortcuts, which is the limitation in developer console. VS code, you can customize it as per you. Okay. I want to retrieve the code. Uh, control R is just a retrieval. You want to deploy control D. You can set up your customization into the VS code as much as customization you want. You can do it.
So that's the limitation and the struggles with the developer console. And I have uh, already discussed some of the uh, some of these things. Why choose VS Code for the Salesforce development? It's a versatile code editor, customization of the workspace as per your personal experience. Into the developer console, uh, it is just a white. Uh, if you see in the bottom, I do have set up my VS Code that all the reserve keyword will look like blue. This is the this is the general set setting that come up with the salesforce dx and the vs code uh, all the reserve keyword will be in the blue and everything is on the white and uh, you can set up the dark theme so that uh, it will not uh, impact your vision uh, so that you will not get a headache uh, at last because um, if you are a health enthusiast as well or maybe watching some of the social media that these days people are saying don't watch the blue screen how you can reduce the blue screen switch your developer console or maybe the, your working environment into the dark mode. So that's why dark mode is always preferred, but you cannot do it into the developer console. Uh, so that's a versatile code editor. You can have your personalized experience uh, in terms of how look and feel and how you want to enhance the productivity. Like I said, uh, deploy quickly, retrieve quickly. Uh, you want to log in into the Salesforce or don't go for uh, login.salesforce.com and then typing in your password you can directly log in from the vs code as well uh, with with just the writing of the commands multiple language support uh, it seamlessly handle the apex as i said and the other programming languages i heard into the introduction many of you are multi cloud or the or you are working on the multiple languages apart from the salesforce as well so let's say you are writing a javascript you are writing some of the small scripts so that way you can see uh, it is having a support for data as well maybe you are writing a python script for your productivity or someone said something and you are writing a python script so that's the multi-language support into the vs code otherwise what will happen you do have to again do the context switching you have to go to the uh, vs uh, you have to go to the developer console but i want to write a python script uh, i am opening up the id but I'm just opening up the VS code and doing a lot of things on the same screen, not switching here and there. Salesforce DX integration streamline workflow directly within the VS code. As I stated, uh, all of these things are the developer experience. As I go further, you will, uh, uh, you will get the term, what is the developer experience? And all of these are the developer experience. Till now we are developing Salesforce product for our business folks for the consultants and everything. We are enhancing their experience, but now Salesforce did other way around. They are on the other side of the of the wall. That let's enhance the experience of the developers as well. So that's where. And we do have extensive plugins into the ecosystems. Once you start using uh, the VS code, uh, you will find out certain plugins. Let's say I want to beautify my JSON. I, I want to see how the JSON will look like. Uh, no need to go to the JSON viewer into the browser. You can see your JSON within the VS code itself. Uh, I want to hit the API. No need to go to the Postman. You can do directly with the VS code by installing the Postman plugin. So this is the power um, that will give uh, that will come with the VS code. I'm taking a pause over here. Uh, any thoughts, any comments, anyone want to say? Let me check. There are any messages, anything? Themes are the one of my favorite in VS Code Imantry. Yes, you have said rightly, and you can you can uh, introduce your own themes as well into the VS Code. Uh, I, I'll just touch base on this uh, Salesforce DX because we have uh, talked a lot. We have already touched base some of these concepts, but still, if you are new, you don't know at all about the Salesforce DX. So it is a modern development approach that streamlines the development and collaboration. As I said, you are developing, but you are a part of the large team. You want to collaborate with someone as well. Um, you can you can do uh, with the help of the Salesforce DX and no need to do a lot of context switching. Every time you are writing Apex class, running the Apex class, going to the Salesforce setup, setting up of the debug logs and 
checking the debug logs over there, downloading the things. No need. Everything is possible in the VS Code, everything. You can imagine things. You can. Uh, you want to log in into the Salesforce, want to go to the setup page, go to the permission set. No, no need to do it. Just type a command, sales, uh, SF, DX, Salesforce DX will directly open up a page for you directly into that permission set or directly into the uh, setup. So that's the power. That way you are saving your clicks and increasing your productivity. Some of the core concept, as I said, uh, before that, the, uh, before the Salesforce DX or the VS Code setup, when you are using a developer console, there is no concept of organization of your code and metadata into the structured manner. Whatever way you want, you can organize it. If you are doing a deployment, uh, you see you are downloading all the metadata into your project going to the VS Code. That that is not organized into the structured manner, and it may create a problem in the long run if you are working on a very big project or a multi-year project. So that's the organization of your uh, code and metadata in a structured manner, so that you will know where are the Apex class, where is the LWC components, where are the static resources, where are profiles, permission sets. Um, so everything is visible to you in a fast and effective manner. Scratch off. So one of the concept comes uh, while you uh, developer uh, experience comes in scratch off. Maybe your current organization is having a setup. You are having a development of uh, environment, your UAT and a production. That's a typical setup, or maybe a directly a UAT environment and the production. But what happened to that typical structure is, let's say you are a uh, you are a team of ten members, twenty members working on a different cloud, sales services, marketing, community, etc. But those teams are using some of the common components. It's always a probability that you may override your each other's code or maybe some of your changes. Maybe you are doing debugging or you are experimenting or you are doing POC. Some of your changes may break their things. So in order to avoid that, there is a concept of scratch org. Scratch org is the environment that is dedicatedly to you. It is kind of a playground if you are uh, into the trailhead. Trailhead will launch a playground that is for you whatever you want to do you can do it you can uh, similarly you can turn on the dev hub uh, into your production if is not enabled you can reach out to your administrator you can enable the dev hub into your production environment and that will give you the capability of a scratch org so a scratch org is just uh, you can spin up a environment that is just look like a production but it will not copy all the data but it is kind of a playground you want to do a quick P sorry you want to do a quick poc you can directly go over there do a quick poc and yes these are the poc results if you want to give a small demo to the business you can go over there do a small demo this is over there so scratch off is your development dedicated development environment for you you can create any number of scratch offs it's uh, from minimum seven days uh, from seven to 30 days by default scratch offs are created for seven days uh, I may be wrong. You can you can check up your uh, your setup uh, or your company information. Uh, how much uh, time you can create a scratch or after that that is scratch or will be destroyed. Another core concept comes into your uh, developer experience is the source control. For the source control, uh, everyone's first favorite choice is Git. So uh, and uh, the tool source control tool maybe a github or a bitbucket or a gitlab anything you can use so source control is for tracking your code changes collaboration and retrieve the previous versions and as needed so for example if you are developing on the developer console or if you are just using a vs code for the lwc component without a source control what will happen you have deployed a change to the production those Salesforce will tell it is last modified by Gaurav, Himanshu, Megha, or someone else, but you will never get to know what that exact modifications are, what are the changes on those. So Git gives a capability, so not Git, that's the capability or the beauty of the source control that you will see, okay, last month Himanshu deployed something, but is there. He, he changed the for loop, he changed the criteria of the socle, okay. 
uh, I think that was a mistake. Let's revert it back. So that's the power or that's the capability that is being given with the source control things. Now I talked about uh, organization of the project. If I zoom in a little bit, uh, so that's how once you create your SFDX project, that will organize like that. All the things will come into 4CPP main default. All your applications, Aura classes, Flexi pages, LWC objects. So that's the organization and a universal organization uh, of the projects. And that way you will get to know, okay, for the Apex classes, I need to go there. So similarly, like you go to the setup for the setup for the classes, you type the Apex classes for the LWC component, you type LWC for the object, you type object. So it is the same organization here into your uh, local machine. So another analogy I can say, you are completely downloading your Salesforce or customization into your local machine. Uh, you are having everything in your local. So, okay. Uh, how to set up your environment if you are new and still uh, uh, you want to do these things how to do it how to download and install the vs code you can go to this link code.visualstudiocode.com i'll paste the link in the chat so if any one of you not installed it yet you can install it so here you will get an option i am using a mac it will by default giving the option for the download mac universal but you will see it is for the window linux and everything so vs code is a versatile ide integrated development environment that runs across uh, that is a platform neutral and if you are aware if you are following the news now git is also having a capability that you can directly load your vs code into your browser as well as a as a uh, tab so so that's the downloading of the visual studio code once the Visual Studio code is being downloaded, next thing that you needed is Salesforce CLI. Again, I'm giving a link uh, for downloading the Salesforce CLI. Okay, so you can download as per your operating system, Mac, Windows, or Linux, whatever. I think most of us use Mac or Windows. No one is still using Linux. So you can download as per your need. Once the Visual, for, Visual Studio code is downloaded, uh, I'll take a pause if someone is uh, taking these steps uh, along with me. And meanwhile, I, I can take the questions. So what is Salesforce DX? Uh, uh, Rohan, did you get the answer of Salesforce DX? I, I explained about Salesforce DX or do you want me to go through? Just uh, reply on the chat. Okay, got it. Perfect. Uh, Varika is asking, how can how can we use API through VS Code? Yes. Uh, so you want to call the API of the Salesforce, or you want to call API some external APIs? I assume I'll give an answer for both. Uh, so you can download the plugin, uh, external APIs, you can download the plugin for the Postman. Uh, there is few more plugins available just like a Postman and it will give a look and feel just like of the Postman. You can give the API, you can give the credential and hit it and uh, immediately it will give the results on the VS Code itself. So no need to context switching or more. Okay, I hope if someone is following these steps uh they have downloaded it once you download the vs code uh, it will look like this uh, it will come as a purple right now it is not having anything and very first thing i want you to do is uh, you can open up the terminal uh from how, how you can open up the terminal let me kill it you can just drag and drop from below uh, it will open up a terminal for you like cmd command prompt so what it is do here you can type all the commands and like uh, and very first thing you can do is type sfdx just to check uh, whether your sfdx is being installed or not if it is not being installed that will give a error and otherwise it will give like you are having these 
these these uh, versions and these are the commands available over here and you see as it is saying uh, there is an update available but still i am on a uh, salesforce cli sf version so just check you should be on 2.1 uh, 2.1 or above if you are below that then you may lose some of the things uh, some of the good uh, new releases uh, concept from the new releases okay uh, i hope you are at this step once you install it very first step is create your first project so what i am going to do is shift windows or p if you are using mac you can type sfdx create a project create a project with manifest i will recommend to go with the create a project just hit that and it will ask you you want to create a standard project empty project or uh, or analytics project let's create a standard project and give us project name let's say demo project one hit enter it will ask you where you want to save uh, i would recommend to create a directory with the name of the code base your local and just create a project over there and it created your project and you see all the project structures that i was showing you in the slide uh, it will automatically create it for you so that's the very first step now before moving on further you have installed the sfdx or maybe your control shift p command palette may not be showing sfdx command over here uh, so for that what you have to do you have to install the extension pack so this is the plugin someone was asking how uh, how to uh, call the apis as well so from the extensions here is the extensions all the extensions you will be able to find out and here just search for salesforce and it will search in the marketplace i would recommend to install salesforce extension pack salesforce extension pack is having let me zoom out salesforce extension pack is having combination of uh, nine plugins which is required for your development it is a plugin for the apex apex interactive developer cli visual force soql lwc etc so this is the starting point this is the basic extension pack that you can go ahead and install and similarly from here you can type in postman so you see here is a postman plugin available you can install and if i go over here it will tell me the details as well that how you can use it so once you install it it will give exactly the same window of the postman that you may be using so get request post requests and everything you can do and send and see your response at the bottom so that's about the postman installation of the uh, salesforce extension pack once you install it um, you will able to see all your sfdx command over here you have created the project you have installed your cli you have installed your uh, extension packs everything now the question will be how i can connect with my salesforce org so before connecting to the salesforce org let me again go back if i do have any open questions over there okay uh, no questions good now the second is how to authorize an org again just open the command palette how to open the command palette it will show over here that uh, control windows uh, shift windows p shift uh, command p sfdx uh, that is a command palette okay let me tell you some uh, terminology this is the command palette that we call this is the project organization this is the extension pack this is the source control versioning whatever changes you will make that will come under the source control and this is the org browser so currently your uh, org browser once you install your sfdx spec uh, it will give the org browser once it is org browser uh, currently it is not having anything 
So it is directly live streaming from your Salesforce or whatever changes you will make that will be visible over here once you refresh it. So let's authorize an org. Authorize an org. I want to authorize an production. So you can give a alias over here. Uh, say I am giving a alias here, Gaurav Dev. So alias are useful in order to identify later on from which org you want to connect. You can authorize more than one org and you can switch the context between those uh, uh, more than one org based on the alias. Just hit enter. So it will open up uh, this login window for me. Let me go to the Chrome. And I can log in. Uh, with my credentials, it will first ask your consent uh, to approve or not, uh, and then it will. You are successfully logged in. Uh, now you can close the browser, and if you see, if you have noticed, this is the local host that now your org is being connected from your local machine. Uh, let me go to here, and now if you see at the bottom, if you notice very bottom now god of dev this is the alias of my org so this is the default org that is being selected over here so god of dev is coming up okay so if i open up here all the org will come up here i do have other orgs as well i can uh, just simply click on and go to those org so now uh, you have authorized your org you have created your first project let's say i want to do something now in the org browser your things will start now it populated everything from my org and let's say i want to check out what are the apex triggers i do have so these are the apex triggers i do have and i can just simply click on any of the trigger and it will come into my local machine okay let's go to the slides uh, if i am not missing anything we have covered downloading VS Code, downloading CLI. We have talked about extension pack, search for the extension pack, and installing. We have created a new project. Uh, uh, I showed you we have configured our default org, alias, and we have authorized our developer org and, uh, and the sandbox on these steps we have did. So I I'm got him. <laughs> Yep. So Gaurav, we have a question from Rohan that what is the difference between project and project with manifest? Okay, so the difference between project and project with manifest is that uh, currently if you create a project, it will create everything. Project with manifest means you have already predefined metadata. Let's say I want to create uh, only for the classes LWC and object, it will create only for those manifest items. So that's the difference. Right now, it has created everything for you. And there is another question from Rahul. It is also mandatory to authorize a dev hub. No, it is not mandatory to authorize a dev hub. Uh, as you have seen, I do have authorized my dev org or my personal Salesforce environment. So it is not mandatory to authorize with a dev hub. But yes, it is mandatory to authorize at least one of the org. Maybe it's a sandbox, maybe it's your production, anything. So, so that in order, in order to work, so that you can, whatever you can work uh, or whatever you can do the org browser, so it will be connected from that org. Okay. Oh. Uh, so I am concluding the session over here. Uh, I want to know from this audience, since you are uh, already using VS Code and moved away a little bit from the uh, developer console, any specific thing you want in the next session, any specific topic you want to emphasize, just put it on the chat. I will try to include that specific topic related to the Salesforce DX. And as I said, in the next session, we will cover a little bit advanced things, writing of the Apex classes in the VS Code, deploying from the VS Code, when to open the org into the browser at all. With a star, I will open the org just to show you that you have done this. 
and it is over there and we will try to debug as well we will do the debug log streaming into the vs code okay so if you want to know uh, more in depth about any of these topics you can visit my youtube channel as well i am posting a link over here uh, you can go here and uh, okay so over to you uh, mega himanshu thank you gaurav uh, this is very insightful so i remember my first day when i was uh, installing vs code and try to integrating with the D, uh, sfdx it took me whole day or if i remember it's like more than that so thank you so much with this knowledge we can just set up this things in few minutes right so, uh, uh, now we have yeah, we yes, have, now we have, have a code i think like uh, let's cover them first and then we can move to gahud sure so we do have question from magesh uh, he's asking if uh, can you explain 2gp packaging or it's totally fine go of like if there's something like we want to take it for next session or if you want to explain yeah. few, that fine too okay yeah. okay so that is the different concept uh, second generation managed packages i think that uh, we shall something we can note down we can take a one more session on the managed packages unlocked packages and all those things so 2 gb 2 gp that's a second generation packaging um, that we can definitely cover but not the scope of this session um, but if still you want to know uh you can reach out to me personally we can discuss on it and if larger audience want to know just give a vote we can conduct one more session sure thank you gaurav and then we have question from ram uh he's asking can we install uh inside vs code postman uh if yes yeah. like uh, what are the steps yeah yeah we can install we can let's install it right away uh let me share my screen and uh that's my vs code and i never install the postman over here so let install it just click install it will install and uh, uh, you can follow the steps i hope it is being installed not installed no it may take time that's what i feel i mean that's but, fine yeah, you can Basically, yeah, you can directly install, and uh, yeah, it will basically run exactly like of the Postman, and I think it is covering the next question as well. Uh, how I can call the standard API through the VS Code? So through the Postman, you can have a Postman extension pack uh, into your Postman, and you can call your standard APIs. Right. So I think that answers your question, guys. And uh, thanks, Kaurav. That was an insightful session, and we got to learn uh, a lot from this. So, Vishal, can we get started with Kahoot now? Uh, sure, Kamal. Sure. Okay. I'll share my screen, guys. Just give me a moment. Uh, so meanwhile, Gaurav is oh, he mentioned sharing his screen. It's a humble request to use your actual name, not the animated name or anything for the Kahoot. Right, guys. That's very important to use your real name and not the uh, any any mnemonics or any nickname in order for us to like reward you rightfully. And uh, one more thing I like to highlight is uh, only the first podium winner would be rewarded as part of the Kahoot uh, initiative. So I'm sharing my screen. Let me know once you guys can see it.
Oh, Himanshu, can you please share your screen? Yeah, I'm sharing. It's not visible. No. No, it's not coming. No. Okay. It's sharing once I can. Uh, let me rejoin quickly. Uh, may I please continue in the meantime? Sure. Yeah. I do have noted down uh, a few requests for Rohan debug logging, Rahul testing and debugging. Yes, that's the main agenda for next one. Okay, thank you. And Nikki, how I can call the Salesforce standard API through VS Code? Uh, in the VS Code, directly not possible. First, you have to install the Postman and Salesforce extension pack, Salesforce, uh, Salesforce Postman library and then uh, you can call that standard and you want to know more i am uh, i'm posting a video url uh, that is again by me uh, how you can call the standard api using the postman but just specifically if you want to do with the vs code i think steps will be same i will i will try to look at it and uh, let you know uh, or maybe I, i'll create a upload If suppose two people are working at the same time, then it does updated code reflect while taking the latest retrieval. Yes, exactly. It will it will uh, retrieve the latest code uh, once you do the retrieval. So you have to do the retrieval manually. And as I said, VS Code is completely personalized. You can personalize to take the retrieval as soon as you will open the VS Code or take the retrieval every five seconds or every one minute. But that will be a lot of hectic, a uh, lot of continuous call. Maybe it will override your code but it's totally depend how you want to personalize it all right thank you gaurav and uh, apologies for the delay so please feel free to scan through the qr code in order to join the kahoot so i'll be waiting for a minute for folks to join and once we have the audience i'll start off Only nine guys were expecting more, at least 15 people. Yeah, guys, don't miss out the chance to win some socks. And just test your knowledge as well. <laughs> yeah, of course, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Himantu, can you please share the link? Yogendra is asking for this code. Uh, sure. Uh, so you can uh, open kahoot.it and like enter this pin. That would be the link. One second. I'll just uh, send it over. And Mekha, if you can uh, share the link for the next session as well in the chat so that if people are interested uh, for the follow up session and they have not is registered yet they can click on sure. that link and register thank you sure, got it. Yep. guys i posted the uh, link and the game pin in the chat feel free to join and uh, yeah Is anyone facing any issues while joining Kahoot? So please let us know.
last call guys uh, uh feel free to join the code the link is in the chat as well and uh you can scan this qr code uh, appearing on your screen in order to join that I think Imanshu, you can start the Kahoot. Sure. Okay. Uh, let's get started, guys. Okay. The first question is: What is the most important benefit of using VS Code for Salesforce development? And the options are it makes you look incredibly cool. Second, it seamlessly integrates with Salesforce DX. It requires absolutely no setup, or it comes up with preloaded with pizza delivery hotkeys. We can only have three. Okay, the right answer was it seamlessly integrates with Salesforce DX. Seven people but it got also look cool. Salesforce developers are doing some cool work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, the options seem intimidating. So, all right. So, we have uh, Ronika at the top, followed by Megesh, and we have good competition there too. So, yeah. Moving on to the next one. What does DX stand for uh, in Salesforce DX? Developer experience, we'll take it. Deluxe xylophone. Digital xylophone, dancing xylophone. <laughs> so yeah, seem like a proper MCQs. The right answer is developer experience. So almost everyone got it right. Good guys. And now the scoreboard looks like almost the same with Megesh and Ronika competing each other, followed by Venkatesh. Moving on to the next one. What is the primary purpose of a Salesforce project in Salesforce DX? To store your favorite cat memes, me. To organize your code and metadata in a structured way. To power a spaceship for intergalactic travel. To house your ever-growing collection of rubber duckies. We have a smart audience, uh, Gaurav. Everyone got it right. Like, <laughs> probably you got yeah. it very well. OK, yes, yes. let's look at the leaderboard maybe megesh and ronika is still on it we do have some change uh venkatesh and Mona is also on that hustle followed by mickey and megesh and ronika is still on their grind so okay moving on to next one what kind of ox are stretch stretch ox in salesforce dx super fluffy and curly ox ephemeral ox designed for development and testing ox that only communicate in emoji or ox that play jazz music 24 by 7. Okay, only one wrong answer and seven of them got it right. Let's look at the scoreboard now. Venkatation one again having a competition, the healthy one. And Ronika Megesh holding their position. Good going, guys. Next one, what is the best way to connect to your Salesforce org using VS Code and Salesforce TX? And the options are telepathy and positive vibes, using the built-in authentication flow in VS Code by offering sacrifice to the coding gods, okay? Shouting your login credentials. Last one, shouting your login credentials. Yeah, that, that's something that I do definitely. <laughs> Just kidding. So the everyone got it right again. Good job, Gaurav, and good job, guys, uh, for listening through Gaurav session. Again, it, it's static. Okay. So, I think questions are so easy. That's what I think. <laughs> what is the most important takeaway from this session? You now have the knowledge to be more efficient Salesforce developer. I agree. That rubber deckies are essential coding companions. Maybe a good sense of humor can helpful in any coding endeavor, all of the above. I'd choose third one, but yeah, let's see. Oh God. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Many people yeah. made all of the above. Yeah, 
according to the session nice customizable workspace for a personalized experience built in support for various programming languages like apex seamless integration with salesforce allowing directly deployment extensive plugin ecosystem offering uh, functionality tailored for salesforce development okay uh no one got it right that's i think uh this is looking a little bit wrong okay okay so guys last question uh yeah uh, okay. this would uh, decide big time so okay the leaderboard again mona is holding his position and he is not leaving it and uh, mickey we have a new contender for runner up position now so okay what is the role of source control like get in salesforce tx to automatically generate motivational quotes for developers to track code changes enabling collaboration and version control to translate your code into different programming languages or to connect your development environment to external apis awesome everyone got it right so with this this was the last question and now we'll see how the leaderboard looks like so we have the podium now the third one we have ronika good job ronika. and second we have mickey and we have a winner from rose mona so congratulations guys and thanks for participating amegesh and venkatesh uh, shout out so yeah this was a good session and thanks for joining in guys and uh, with that i like to hand it over to vishal or mega if they have anything to say So, Munna Prashad, can you please share your email address over the chat? Sure, I'll share my email ID. Thanks, guys. Really interactive session. Oh, uh, any suggestion or any feedback? So, if you want to share, that would be great for us. Uh, actually, I'm good. Actually, whatever was uh, provided in the in one hour training, I was like good. In, it was good actually. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, so Mickey, your question is, do I get any swag? So no, Mickey. For this session, we are having only one swag. So hopefully, in next session, you will get a chance to win swag. All right. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining today's session, and thank you so much, Kaurav, for such an amazing session. So, with this, I am just wrapping up today's session. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Nice audience. Thanks for participating. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining. Thanks all.